In 2005, a mysterious museum specimen of a monitor lizard was re-identified as a new species, Zug's monitor, Varanus zugorum. This mysterious museum specimen was collected in 1980 and misidentified initially as a mangrove monitor. These photos I'm about to show you are the only known photos of this species in existence, and unfortunately, the Zug's monitor lizard has not been seen since. For me, looking at these photos is both fascinating and haunting. Not only were these the first photos ever taken of this lizard, but they could potentially be the last. The one known specimen of the Zoog's monitor lizard was found in 1980 on the island of Halmahera in Indonesia, in the vicinity of the Jailolo district. Indonesia is fascinating from a herpetological standpoint because it is made up of roughly 18,000 islands, and roughly only 6,000 of those islands are actually inhabited, meaning that there's a lot of untamed wilderness out there in Indonesia, and probably a lot of things that we haven't discovered yet, and a lot of things to learn about the species that we have discovered. Now at this point, you're probably wondering why I'm talking about this lizard, that it might be extinct and we only have two known photographs of it and one specimen, and the reason is a conservation organization known as the Biodiversity Group has reason to believe that this lizard could still exist on these islands in Indonesia, and they want to prove it. Any sort of expedition to rediscover a potentially extinct species comes with its costs, but the biodiversity group is bringing innovative science to the table in an attempt to change the way that we survey for these super rare animals. The implications of success with this project are massive for science, and particularly for herpetology, and just in general, the search for some of these incredibly rare animals, even things that are not reptiles. And to elaborate a little bit on what I mean by that, this will be the first time that terrestrial eDNA, which stands for environmental DNA, will hopefully be collected from the Zoog's monitor lizard. In addition to doing normal visual encounter surveys and trapping and stuff like we would do on a normal herping field trip, these guys are using eDNA as an extra level of thoroughness in the search for this lizard. EDNA is pretty revolutionary in and of itself. This has actually been very, very important in the field of herpetology already for discovering and confirming the existence of populations of rare amphibians such as hellbenders. However, if this kind of technology can be adapted and used terrestrially to detect the presence of a previously thought to be extinct species, that is incredible news. And that's what I mean when I say this project has larger implications than just discovering one lizard. Because if they're able to successfully use terrestrial eDNA to find this lizard, the possibilities and implications of that technology in the conservation field are limitless. But wait, this gets even better. Historically, collection of scientific specimens for research has been a little bit controversial because normally what happens is a physical specimen is taken from the wild and preserved to be studied for future generations. Like it or not, the benefits of having museum specimens are tremendous. However, these guys have come up with a potential alternative to that for use with things that are potentially very rare, like the Zoog's monitor lizard. And this is, once again, groundbreaking technology. The Biodiversity Group has partnered with one of the largest companies in the photography industry to develop the world's first scanning rig that can actually capture 3D models and be carried in a backpack in the field. And the benefits of this would be that in certain situations you could avoid taking a physical specimen and euthanizing it for a museum deposition by using this technology to take a detailed 3D scan of the individual lizard. And the reason this is so important in this specific instance and in other instances, potentially going forwards, is that if these guys are able to find a Zoog's monitor lizard, there will be no way to tell if that is the last individual left on Earth. And since there's already a holotype specimen in the form of the specimen that was collected in 1980, it would just be completely counterproductive to euthanize the first Zoog's monitor lizard found in over 40 years. And while I do acknowledge that museum specimens are incredibly useful, I, I do think that this is a step in the right direction, especially when we're talking about some of these potentially critically imperiled animals. Not having any pressure to euthanize an animal for science is fantastic in my opinion, and I think these guys have the right idea with this, and I think it's another example of how this study could kind of change the game going forwards. Between the terrestrial eDNA and 3D models of individual animals being deposited as museum specimens, there's a lot of big implications with this project on top of discovering a potentially extinct lizard, which in and of itself is awesome. So this leads us to the big problem. These guys need funding to do this work. 
If this campaign is fully funded, Robert Downey Jr. will provide partial matching funds to support this expedition. How cool is that, that Iron Man himself prepared to fund this expedition to look for this potentially extinct lizard? It's kind of an incredible situation going on here. Between the terrestrial environmental DNA and the 3D models being deposited as museum specimens, and the rediscovery of a potentially extinct lizard, and Iron Man's help, it's just epic. And I want to see this happen. I think it has a lot of fantastic implications, not only for herpetology, but for science in general. And I think it's really cool that celebrities like Robert Downey Jr. are willing to put their money where their mouth is when it comes to conservation. So make sure to check out the link below if you have a little extra money you are willing to contribute to this project. And if not, drop a like, share the video, help me get this information out to as many people as possible so that we can meet the campaign goals and thus get Robert Downey Jr.'s funding involved as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed at least learning about this really cool lizard. If the project does go successfully and they are able to rediscover it, you can say that you knew it was happening. Thank you guys so much for watching, and the next episode will be a regular herping vlog, probably coming out on Friday. So long live the Zoogs Monitor Lizard, and I will see you guys next time.